What's going on, Feed the Beasters? JD here for the 16th episode of JD Plays Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. And, yeah, we got some more stuff done yesterday. Got this nice little ore washing facility all put into place. That was glorious. And I had mentioned yesterday that I was ready to start moving towards conduit. I was wanting to get... You know, use the ore wash facility and or the thermal centrifuge, which I've been using the thermal centrifuge, um, to get back uh, stone dust. And we also started making some overclockers, right? So I've actually got some of those overclockers. I've made a couple more. I've stuck them inside this metal former, and I've been using that to uh, knock out refined iron plates and some other stuff. I've got, I've got more than a couple of them now around the base. I, I'm still making them as I get time. So, for example, in here... You know, this, these four, they greatly speed up the process of smashing down these things. But we'll throw our plates in there for a little bit and let those get squished into uh, dense refined iron plates. That's, you know, that's kind of the hope. Uh, we're going to grab these real quick and throw them in there. So, on the to-do list for today, for to dizzle, oh, I'm going to be able to put these back for once. Hoorah! We've got some applied energistics steps to start looking at. We want to start making some nether quartz seed and some sardis quartz seeds. Then we're going to look at some stuff back in Ender I.O. We're going to look at making the vibrant crystal, the vibrant capacitor bank, soul vials, powered spawners, and we're going to finish up with hopefully knocking out some conduit. So let's dive into it. Now, nether quartz seed and quartz seed. Let's see. I think I've got the powders right here somewhere. Somewhere we've got... Here, let's do it like this. Applied. All right, so somewhere I've got this nether quartz seed. There it is. It's laying around the base right in here. Right here, nether quartz dust and certus quartz dust. Now, as the name implies, these dusts come from grinding down their appropriate parent parental type, such as nether quartz or certus quartz, etc., etc. And... What you do with this is you take it and you combine it with some sand. So I've got 12 and 24. We need about 36. Let's grab this 20 and then we'll just fill it up from there. When you do this, you're going to get back these little seeds. And you're going to double whatever you put in there. So if you put 24 quartz dust, you're going to get back 48 quartz seeds. Same thing for the nether quartz. Now, there's obviously also the uh, another type of quartz. We'll talk about that a bit later. But with these seeds, what you do with them is you need to grow these seeds. You're going to start growing your own crystal. And I want to get some hamburgers in it because I'm moving very slowly right now. So we're just going to drop these seeds directly into a pool of water and let them sit. And they will not be picked up by the ring of magnetization until it's time to pick them back up. Which takes a few hours, 12 to 24 hours. I can't remember the exact amount of time. Go Google it. I, I, I didn't check. Uh, but what I can tell you is that when these things are done growing you will get back these fancy pure quartz crystals and as you can see right here there is a pure certus quartz a pure nether quartz but then there's also this pure flu quartz and pure flu quartz flu seeds made from flu dust and sand into a puddle okay well how do we get the flu seeds well to get flu seeds you need flu dust to get flu dust you need flu crystals to get flu crystals well, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's not a difficult process. You make them, if I remember correctly. We'll go into that later. But yeah, you're going to want to be start growing all these kinds. I think it's some type of charging you do to it or whatever. Basically, all of your certus quartz, aside that you're, you know, what you're going to use for actual recipes, can be duplicated. And almost any recipe that's going to use your standard certus quartz in it will accept this purified certus quartz. So this is an effectively a way to d duplicate your certus quartz. I wish I could remember how to make this stuff because there was a time where I knew and I don't I don't remember anymore. But uh, we will start right here. Drop one charged certus quartz plus one nether quartz plus one redstone dust into a puddle next to one another and wait a moment to receive two flu crystals. So that's how you make it. Charged nether quartz, charged quartz, nether quartz, redstone dust. We'll actually make one. Why not? So let's see. We should have some charged right here. Bam. Nether quartz. And do I, I should have redstone dust somewhere around this base. There's some. Alright, so we'll run over here to a puddle of water. And we'll throw this, this, and this. 
Wait a moment. There they are. Scoop them back up. There's our fluid crystals. And just like with the other crystals, once you make these, you can duplicate them. So we can throw these into the pulverizer, grind it down, get back this flu dust powder from the two we made, grab some sand, mix together, and get four flu crystal seeds. So I'll be making some of this stuff as I go, just in kind of preparation. We're nowhere near ready for applied energistics just yet, but we're going to, you know, go ahead and start getting things good to go for that. Okay. So we're done talking about applied energistics and we're done talking about the quartz seeds for the moment. Now it's on Ender IO and Vibrant Crystals and all the fun stuff associated with that. Now, where did I do with it? Right here. So a Vibrant Crystal is very simple to make. You're going to need an Electron Emerald Tube, which we've made in the past, or I made yesterday actually. Uh, we're also going to need, well, to make these, you're going to need some Vibrant Alloy Nuggets. Uh, Enderium nuggets, and if you don't remember how to make these, it's just the carpenter. Five emeralds and a carpenter, a couple of redstone, get your emerald tubes. No big deal. All right, we're going to make three of these. One, two, three. And we're going to lock that recipe in place because I, I do use those for various things. And this is going to be kind of one of my uh, Ender IO uh, crafting boxes. Now, with that made, the next thing that I would like to make is the vibrant capacitor bank. And we're going to go over to Ender IO and we're going to take a look here. The Vibrant Capacitor Bank holds 25 million RF in a single block. And we either make it by taking four Vibrant Alloys with two capacitor banks, or we simply make four octatic capacitors and use four electro, uh, electrical steel. Either way, this one's still going to require two uh, octatic capacitors as well. We're going to make the from scratch recipe. And I believe the stuff that I need for that is right here. So I've already actually got some octatics on me somewhere right here that I made earlier. So we're going to clear this out. We're going to put those in a cross shape. We're going to drop in the pulse, the vibrating. Sorry. I always call these pulsating. There is a pulsating crystal as well right here. And I always call the vibrance pulsating for some reason. Anyways. And then we're going to take some electrical steel. And that should give us a handy dandy vibrant capacitor. Now, this thing is freaking awesome because it has a massive amount of storage space in it. And for that massive amount of storage space, we're gonna start storing into it right now. But the beautiful thing is that it's a max input of 25,000 and a max output of 25,000. This thing can output a crap ton for charging devices and things like that. So this, when you get one of these, you know, redstone flux capacitors and later you decide you wanna upgrade it, right? And it can now hold this massive amount, you know, 20 million RF. Which, you know what? Let's let's do that. Let's upgrade that. I mean, why not? We've waited all this time. And we never could do it before. And we can now. Let's do it. Let's put that bad mamma jamma right there. We're going to pop this in here. Put that down. We need a little uh, electrotine. Boom. Put this around it. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then let's grab two. Enderium. And we've now got a 20 million RF storage in the form of this resonant flux capacitor. So with this, if I pop this in here, it's going to take it a while to charge this up. Like this thing can barely even move the ticker before it gets drained. And same thing if I were to pop it in here, this thing, this thing can't touch it, but this thing can, this thing can pump in 25,000 RF a tick into it and it's going to move it. The problem is, is my power system cannot put out that kind of power right now. It's, it's just not that strong. So it's going to take it a while to get this system fully charged up. And every drop of RF that's being produced is going to be poured into this little device right here. Also, currently all of my power is coming out of this capacitor to power all of my machines. Well, this new capacitor bank is now draining that power. So I don't need this filled up right now. I'm going to pull it out for now. We'll fill it up later. Okay. But cool thing to know is this thing holds 25 million RF and we are absolutely going to make use of that. Now, as with a lot of the items in the game, these Ender IO machines, they're happy to be handled by a wrench. So we can take this and shift right click and pick it up. And we can see that this guy's got 1.5 million RF in it ready to be used. And that's great because we're about to make use of it. The next item I would like to make is a soul vial. And soul vials are very simple. They take some solarium, 
Three fused quartz, which is simply cooked quartz in an alloy smelter. Oh, by the way, it's not just three. It's 12 to get three. It takes four per one quartz. And it gives you a soul vial. Now, I'm going to pull one out and put it here. And it tells you, this is empty. Right click on a mob to capture its soul. Right click again to release it. I'm going to put this back for now. Here I have one. I have a soul. I've actually gone out and I've captured a villager. So I can right click and put that villager down. And I can take him around with me. This is a farmer. I could trade with this guy right now if I wanted to. I could give him emeralds to get bread. And if I shift right click, it'll put him right back inside. Now, not everything has to be shift right click, but because a farmer, you know, a villager has a right click interface, shift right clicking is how you pick him up. Soul vials can be stored in potion racks. And I made a couple of these potion racks. We've talk talked about them in the past to store all of my uh, awkward potions and potions I got out of some loot bags. So this is very simple to make. It's just some oak slabs with some oak planks and a glass bottle. Okay, but you can store your soul vials in a potion uh, bench if you would like to. Or is it, what is it called? Yeah, potion shelf, I'm sorry. Now, speaking of those loot bags, uh, we happen to have gotten a couple, if I remember correct. Yeah, we got a rare one right here, and an uncommon. Because I went on a little adventure a little while back, and my good friend Starion came on and started distracting me, and I got wrecked by a bunch of mobs, and it was terrible, and I thought I was going to cry, and ended up getting some loot, and it was fun. So let's open them. So from the uncommon, we get some chain boots. Booties, love them. And a potion of water breathing. Okay. And some coins. Love getting those gold coins. We'll just stick that over there. Then from the uh, rare treasure, let's open this. All right, we got an emerald. Nice. An apprentice ring of Ignis. Nice. And a splash potion of regeneration. Cool. So let's stick that in there. Looking good. All right, so free emeralds. Always happy about those. And a ring. We'll use this later. For right now, we're at least getting a discount. And hey, look, all of our bobble slots are now full. This is still crap. It's mundane. But, you know, we'll use it down the road. And we got some booties. Freaking awesome. All right. Now, next thing on the list after the soul vial was the powered spawner. And the powered spawner kind of goes hand in hand with the soul vial. It's another Ender IO creation. What? I'm out of el I know. I know I'm not out of electrical steel because I made a bunch. It is somewhere in this base. There's no way I used all of that electrical steel up because I made a crap load of it. It might be in one of these. See, here's the problem when you store stuff on you. Okay, hold on. Maybe I didn't make a bunch. Maybe I just imagined I made a bunch. Anyway, electrical steel is pretty simple to make. Silicon, coal, iron. No, I did make a bunch. What did I do with it? There it is. It's already over here. It's already over in this box right here. Electrical steel. Okay. Let's grab that out of there. We want to make a powered spawner. So back over in Ender IO, we have these things called powered spawners. And here's one right here. This is an empty one. With a powered spawner, you're going to need some steel, some vibrant crystals, a Z Logic controller, machine chassis, and a head. Now, we've literally made everything here, but in case you don't remember, the Z-Logic controller comes from the Slice and Splice. And it's a couple of silicon with a solarium, redstone, and zombie head. So, pretty simple. The machine chassis is just a machine frame with iron bars, basic capacitor, lumium ingots. So, no problem there either. I happen to have all of that sitting right here, ready to go, with the exception of a head, which I have sitting right here, ready to go. Let's drop that in there. And that gets us our powered spawner. Now, a powered spawner by itself does nothing. You have to combine with a broken spawner in an anvil. Okay, well, how do we get an anvil? Anvils are kind of part of the whole enchanting thing in the game. And we're going to need some blocks of iron. Some iron ingots. There's also a dark steel anvil. Lasts much longer than a vanilla anvil. And this comes from Ender IO. To make this, we need dark steel. And I was going to make some dark steel, but I don't... Yeah, I did. I made some. Okay, so we got some dark steel right here. Let's pull it all out. 
So if we take some dark steel and we pop it in like so, pull one of them back out, run these across the top, drop this down and across, and there we go. We get an anvil, dark steel anvil. All right, let's pick a place to put this. So this is kind of what I intend to have as my magic room. And I'm going to be setting up uh, a enchanting table and all that good stuff in here eventually. This is 1.7, buddy. I'm not playing light. I have no intentions to play light. Sorry, bud. So let's drop our anvil down. And if we put this in here and we go get a broken spawner. And we've got some broken spawners somewhere. I just got to remember what I've got here. Right here. So I've got a cave spider and I've got some zombies. Let's take one of these cave spider spawners. Oh, and it will spit this out, by the way. The anvil has no inventory storage. I can put these in here together and nothing's going to happen. What we have to do is we needed this other machine that we made a while back, this soul binder. And if we set this guy down right here, this tells you that obviously we put a soul vial and a broken spawner, we're going to get something out, right? Let's give it some power. And it's been a while since I've done this, so don't be surprised if I don't screw this up. But combined with a powered spawner in an anvil to set spawn type. Okay. So here's a powered spawner. Here's this. Enchantment costs 30. I, I don't have 30 on me. So I, what am I going to do about this? Well, let's, let's go downstairs real quick. There's lots of ways that I can get a bunch of experience, but one of the easiest ways is going to be to come down here and use these essence berries. And I may have to stop recording for a minute and go take care of this, but this should get me at least close. And there we go, 30. What a coinky dink. So let's run back up here. Open this back up, put in the powered spawner, put in this. Okay, cave spider. Supply with power to activate, upgrade with capacitors to increase. Okay, cool. So now, I can't remember how to do this, but you can actually combine a, a soul vial in here. But anyways, regardless, I can now sit this powered spawner down and I allow it to spawn cave spiders. All that I want. Now, I don't like cave spiders. I don't want to make them. You can also let it set it up to uh, capture things. Okay? We're not actually going to spawn any cave spiders right now because I don't want to spawn them. But using this setup, we can make any kind of spawner we want. We can make villager spawners. We can make Enderman spawners, the whole nine yards. And that's what we're going to be doing with these is we're, we're getting ready to set up a lot of mob farms to farm specific resources. Furthermore, we can now use this anvil to do all, all kinds of repairs and enchants and things. For example, I can rename my storage tablets now. It's going to cost me five experience, but if I wanted to, I could come and rename this storage tablet. So, animals are very cool little devices. And I will show you guys how to do a custom, because I screwed it up right there, a custom uh, spawner soon. Let me see if I can remember how to do it right quick while we're still in here. I have additional spider spawners. How do you do this again? Recipe, right here. Okay. So, broken spider spawner... Enchantment costs 15. So put this, put that in. And then put, put this in. It's not going to let me. I wonder if it's because I don't have the experience already on me. Could be because I don't have any experience yet. We'll keep an eye on it. If we get enough experience, we'll come back and we'll try it again right quick. But it did allow me to put the spawner in there that time. And it may have been simply because I didn't have enough experience on me. It's been a while since I've played with these. But this, like any other Ender IO block, pretty simple to use. Alright. I am going to grab this. I actually want to plug this in somewhere right quick. And let it start sucking some of the additional power out of the system. And where that's going to be is right over here. So we're going to break this piece off. We're going to set the capacitor down right here. We're going to put this here and put this back to here. With that done, 
This thing is now pulling power out of the steam dynamo and pushing this system, which is cool because we're still making tons of blaze lamps for whenever I decide, you know, I want to use these as combustible fuel for whatever. Nice little system. Hey, all my under pearls are ready to harvest. Let's harvest them. And we got back two bonus seeds that time, so we'll now have 17 ender lilies. Remember, we started with uh, a total of five ender lilies. We're up to 17 now, so that's nice. Okay, with the powered spawner done, the last thing that I want to talk about right now is conduits. And conduits are kind of a massive thing in Ender IO. They're like some of the best ways to move power anywhere, items anywhere, liquids anywhere. We've already made some redstone conduit in the past, so you've kind of already seen how conduit works, but I haven't really shown it too much. So in power conduits, you have energy conduit, which moves 640 RF a tick. You have enhanced energy conduit, which moves 5K RF per tick. And then you have ender energy conduit, which moves 20K RF per tick. And then in your liquid versions, you have fluid, pressurized fluid, and ender fluid. And then finally, you have item conduit, which of course moves items around. I'm interested in item conduit, technically both of these, and technically both of these. And I've done a lot of setup for showing how these get made already. So let's start off with Ender, I mean with Item. To make Item Conduit, you're going to need to be able to make Item Ducts first, Warped Item Ducts, which come from Item Ducts. And this is a recipe that comes out of Thermal Dynamics, and it's hardened glass combined with glass and tin plates. And in this box, I've already been making a lot of this stuff just to kind of show the progression chart. So we take these items and we make some Item Ducts, which I have some Item Ducts, I made some. We then take the item duct and combine it with a single bar of enderium and we get warped item duct. So right here I have six warped item duct. If you take these six warped item duct and two of these resonant servo, which are made by taking two enderium ingots, two iron ore berries or iron nuggets, a piece of hardened glass and a piece of redstone, which if you don't remember how to make hardened glass, it's very simple. It's lead, combined with obsidian dust. Four obsidian dust to one lead will get you two hardened glass. So we've got these servos and we've got these warped item ducts. Let's go ahead and do I have enough? No, I don't have anything with me right now. If we come back over to this box, this is where we're going to make it. We need some conduit binder to make this stuff. And what did I do with that binder? I know I have it made. It's probably in one of my bags at this point because it kept getting in my way. Uh, is it over here? Yeah, it's right back here. All right, let's grab this conduit binder. We got 64 right here. There's some more of it floating around here somewhere. But if we come in here and we take this conduit binder and we throw it across here like so. I think it's four of them. We put this in place and we take three of these warped item ducts. That will give us our first batch of conduit and item conduit at that let's lock that recipe item conduit is amazing as an example let's find something fun mm. okay this will actually work perfect right here so right now I'm having to use this hopper to pull things out of the induction smelter and out of the pulverizer. And it works just fine because these machines happen to be able to push their own items out. But if upgrading this machine, you happen to take out the uh, integrated servo, it could no longer transfer items out on its own. But that's okay. If you happen to have the conduit, like so, this one piece of conduit can pull from all four machines And you can take these things, right click them, and set them into different modes. So we can do extracting and inserting. So obviously we're pulling from here and here and inserting into here. And you could actually pull from the front and the back as well. That's one beautiful thing about the conduits. 
the fact that they're self-powered, they have their own ability to pool, and they can be filtered is amazing in and of itself. Even better yet is the next part that I'm going to show you. And that's going to require me to craft the next piece, the next conduit. So that's item conduit. Let's make some power conduit. And we're going to go to the highest end right now. Now, ender conduit takes the same kind of binding servo setup. So I've got two of the servos made. We're just going to drop them in here. And we're going to go back and talk about their individual recipes in just a minute. And that gives me ender energy conduit. So let's pull that out. These machines, all four, or all three, need to be powered. And I can put power in the exact same block as I can put item transfer. And that, in and of itself, is the true power of conduits. I no longer have to run wires all over the place to power these things. I could have, just like this, and up to here, Do I have an engineering hammer on me? Probably not. Let's run over here and grab one. There we go. So now, these three machines don't need any of the power cables, like this one, hooked up to them anymore. They're all being powered directly out of this one HV capacitor off of these three lines. And when building modular setups, that becomes truly an amazing thing because you're saving space. You're able to run all your lines through, you know, this single position. Whoops, I didn't mean to click that. Now, the last piece of conduit that we want to make is we want to make a fluid conduit. And it's kind of the same deal. We're going to take reinforced servos with some hardened fluid duct. Okay, well, I've got temperate fluid duct. How do, and I, I've got hardened fluid duct. All right, let's take some hardened. Let's go ahead and make another uh, servo. Oh, I, I don't have the electrum. So the servos, there's multiple different types of servos. Obviously, there's resonant. There's uh, reinforced. There's hardened. Hardened takes invar. Reinforced takes electrum. So let's pull a couple of those out. Pop back into this chest. Lock that down. Put this in. And we're going to take hardened fluid duct right here. Pop this back into here. And that gives us ender fluid conduit. This particular type of liquid conduit allows you to transfer liquids of any uh, heat, of any type, you know, whatever. And it not only allows you to transfer in that capacity, but it allows you to transfer more than one liquid at a time. And just like with the others, we now have those going through the same block as the item and the power. So we can run items, power, fluids, all through a single block with these conduits and connect to multiple blocks and directly control what types of inputs and outputs we want to have. That's pretty freaking fantastic and amazing. That's why conduits are so, so powerful and probably one of my favorite items in the game. They just allow you to do so much. Now, we, we kind of bypassed a lot of information to get to this point. And we're going to go back and look at some of that information now. And that is the information of how we craft all these different ducts that we skipped from thermal expansion. So the item duct we talked about, it's very simple. Tin plate, hardened glass, glass. No big deal. The warped item duct, same thing. Take the item duct, combine it with enderium ingots. You're going to get six item ducts every time you craft the recipe. So a single enderium ingot will get you the six warped item duct, which you'll then combine with your servo and your uh, conduit binder. Now the next one down is the temperate fluid ducts. Similar to the item ducts, it's simply hardened glass with a piece of glass and two copper plates instead of tin. The next level up for hardened simply doesn't even include this temperate. It's a totally different recipe. You need hardened glass in the center with Invar Blend, the powder form of Invar before you smelt it, and two lumium glass, hardened lumium glass. Now this is a new item, but it's not hard to make. You make it just like you make the hardened glass, except for instead of using lead, you're using the lumium alloy. So four obsidian dust with either a lumium ingot or aluminum alloy, lumium alloy will get you hardened lumium glass. 
Now this recipe looks big and scary. And this is redstone energy flux duct empty. Why does it say empty? Well, if we go to flux duct right quick, there are, we've made a few of these before. We've made some leadstone flux duct back when we made our first jetpack. And this stuff moves 200 RF a tick. It moves power. Then there's hardened, which is very similar to lead, except for that we upgrade to steel plates. This one will move 800 RF a tick. The next is redstone energy flux duct, which you're, we've made redstone energy flux duct empty. You take the empty flux duct and you put it in a fluid transposer and pour destabilized redstone over it to fill it. And this moves 8,000 RF a tick. It's a very good power transfer rate. Okay. So the question is, what about all these other pieces? Well, lumium, <clears throat> I mean, I'm sorry, signalum, you know how to make. We made this way back when. Uh, we can make this either in the alloy smelter or we can make this uh, via the, uh, you can make it in the induction smelter as well if you've already got the blend. The blend comes from copper, silver, and destabilized redstone again. So no problem making this signalum. The erothium and the flux electrum is a little is are the new items here. And the flux electrum blend is very simple. Whoops. We simply pour destabilized redstone from a transposer over electrum and it becomes flux electrum. So that's easy. Erothium dust is very simple, similar to cryothium or pyrothium, in that we are going to combine some type of powder, in this case blitz, with niter, sand, and redstone. And in order to get the blitz powder, you can either get a blitz rod or you can pour destabilized redstone over sand and get blitz powder. So that's not too hard at all. So this is actually not a very difficult recipe to craft as long as you've got some materials laying around. The next step up is to get to the resonant flux duct and they take these redstone energy flux ducts into their recipe. You will need six of these with an enderium gear, which we've made in the past, and two of the petrothium dust. Now this petrothium dust is just like the erothium, the cryothium, the pyrothium dusts, in that it's going to take a powder, this time basalts, some obsidian, dust, clay, and redstone. To get the basalts powder, you either get a basalts rod, or you can pour redstone over obsidian dust. So I told you way back when all of these different types of dusts could be manufactured. And I just proved it. We've manufactured every type of dust we've needed without going out and hunting mobs. So it's a pretty simple process, to be honest, to build up to these resonant flux ducts. And just like with the empty, you know, redstone energy flux duct, the resonant flux duct now gets taken and you fill it with uh, destabilized redstone. And that gets you the actual resonant flux duct, which we use to craft the conduits right here. So three resonant flux ducts. So if we wanted to step down and not craft energy, I mean ender energy conduit, we could just as easily have skipped the step of going all the way up to resonant flux duct and stayed at redstone energy flux duct and made enhanced energy conduit instead. And so it just, just kind of gives you different options for where you're at in the game and what you can afford and what, you know, realistically, how much energy are you transferring? You don't always need something that can move 5k or 20k energy. There's not always a need for conduit, but they are neater. They have no animation, so they save on FPS and they're just, they're just really nice, really simple to use. Okay, so that's pretty much that. Um, there was something else I was going to bring up, but I can't remember what it is right now. I'm trying to think about that. Now, there are additional things that can be done with conduits. Like I said, you have these basic item filters, advanced item filters, existing item filters, mod item filters, chargeable items. You have conduit probes, all kinds of fun stuff. And there are other conduits in the game. But... As it stands right now, we've opened up quite a bit because now we've got the ability to use conduits where we want, the ability to go create mob farms using powered spawners. Uh, we've got this 25 million RF storage capability now that we can continue to build out, out upon until we are just storing, you know, massive amounts of power. And we now have the appropriate conduits to begin moving items around. Now, another place that these conduits are going to come in handy and useful right off the bat is in this exact system that we're looking at. Because using these conduits, I can now transfer items around much more easily than I ever could with these item transfer nodes. They're just, they're much more efficient and clean. So as always guys, I hope you...
Alright, YouTube. So, we were trying to combine a handy dandy villager soul vial. Let me see if I can find that right quick. Soul. Where did I put it? Oh, I know where I'll put it. It's out here. So, in the, in the earlier episode, I was trying to combine the soul vial right here with a villager in it with my uh in my soul binder with this broken spawner i had forgotten that they have that blacklisted in this pack you cannot create a villager powered spawner instead with a villager what you're going to want to do is you, you're going to want to make a safari net that's reusable and use the mfr spawner instead i went out and i captured an enderman and we're going to create a powered spawner with the enderman so this is going to take 15 experience levels and if I could pump the liquid XP in if I wanted to but instead I'm gonna use player XP so there we go so it now kicks on and it starts consuming power and it's obviously it's gonna run out of power long before it's done so let's run downstairs right quick takes a couple million RF to pull this off and let's grab that right here So where is my wrench? And I went and did some exploring and I found all kinds of stuff. So we'll talk about that maybe next time if I don't just incorporate them and go. I know I have a wrench around here somewhere. Or it's actually a crescent hammer is what I'm looking for. That'd be why I can't find it. Cre Cre there it is. Crescent hammer. All right, let's grab this. Pull it off here. We'll go ahead and put this back together for the moment. Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> Alright, grab this. And let's see if it's going to let me hook this all back up. It's not because of this big guy. There we go. Now I can put this guy back. And he's good. Let's run back upstairs right quick. And go put down this capacitor by the machine. And we've got like 17 million RF stored in that now. So that'll push this guy back up to power. And it's going to start ticking away. And it's going to get this done. Now just like any other uh, Ender I.O. machine, like the sag mill, you can take an octatic capacitor and stick it in this soul binder and speed up its ability to do work. So we can open this bad mamma jam up, pop that in there, and it will get done considerably faster. Now while that's working, we are going to go ahead and do the other way that we could have done this. We're not going to make the full machine because we don't have that much time. This is more of a, hey, here's what happened. But if we take one of these gas tiers, and if you look at what it, the recipes that it's used in, one of the recipes is going to be this safari net. Okay. So if we open this up, pop that in there. And grab one, two, three, four ender pearls. This is a reusable safari net. There we go. And it will allow us to throw the villager out of that soul vial and scoop him up instead in this safari net. The cool thing about these, these come from Mine Factory Reloaded. And in Mine Factory Reloaded, we're going to get a spawner somewhere in here. Auto spawner is, I think, the name of it. There's auto enchanter, ejector, and it's not very difficult to craft. Right there, auto spawner. So all we need is our machine frame, some plastic sheets, some magma crystal creams, which you can craft magma cream pretty easily. Actually, I probably could make this real quick. Why not? Let's go ahead and knock it out. Okay. I've got, the, I should have the, everything I need basically right over here. Ah. Now get out of there. One of these. And let's get... I should have a bucket somewhere right there. Give me a bucket. Let's see. I should have some saw... Some plastic uh, sheets somewhere. Alright. What recipe you got up in here right now? We need...
some of this and some of that raw plastic that was back there. And let's run over here, click, add this, add this, rotate it because I can never remember the recipe. That gives us our two plastic sheets. Okay, so if we take this, put it in here, two plastic sheets here and here, uh, slime balls. I should have some slime balls on me, but there should definitely be some in here. There's one magma cream already made, so we just need to make one more. Grab a blaze powder. We need another wart. I never remember what it looks like right there. There's one up here. Beautiful. Oh, that's one of my good ones. I can't use those. We'll have to go grab one from downstairs. And we'll need to make the golden reception cable. That's pretty simple. We'll use this guy right here. And what else did I need? Two emeralds. Okay, that'll knock that out. And we'll actually use this for just a second, hopefully, and I'll spawn a villager with it, maybe. It, it, actually, we may not be able to, because I think it takes mob essence, if I remember right. But one gold bar, two emeralds, a couple of redstone. There we go. There's that. Okay, magma creams, there and there, this here, and there we go, we got an auto spawner. So an auto spawner, much like all the other MFR devices, we'll run off of RF, we plop it down, and we can put this in here and decide what we want to spawn, exact copy, whatnot, but we will need essence put in here, and essence is basically liquid XP, and there's a lot of ways to do this, but and we'll get into how to do that next time, but using this setup, we can actually spawn villagers. Using this bad boy, we can turn it into a powered spawner, much like the powered spawner we built earlier inside of this anvil, and we'll be able to force spawn Endermen. So, just a short addendum. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the earlier episode. As always, take it easy. Laters.